welcome or welcome back to my channel hey see books i'm camilla and today i thought i would take you on a book tour of my bookshelf in canada so it's not what it used to be obviously i've not lived in canada for about 10 years now so i've given a lot like every trip that i come i kind of purge some of my stuff that is left here and i include some books or some of the books might be in boxes but anyway, there's a bookshelf behind me. I will take you through that. There's some books that are books that I've bought, uh, even like in the last few weeks or years. And others are just books that are kind of remnants of my years at university. And, you know, bought books that my parents may have bought. But yes, yeah, so I'm going to get you through that. I'll also show you, I thought I'd show you, uh, the books about the house a little bit. My parents love absolutely love books so there are books everywhere so I'll take you on a little walk through afterwards as well so let's start with the bookshelf behind me which is in my I guess bedroom growing up so let's go all right let's start from the top this is the top shelf so it's, it's a tiny shelf it's cute look there's a little box with my name on it Camilla it's so cute I've had this for as long as I can remember so we have a bit of a mix of books from school, books in the last few years, books in French, books in English, you know, just a bit of everything. All right, this one here is a book, I won't open it, but it has a collection of ticket stubs from like the movies and concerts that I used to collect. So that's what's in here. This book, oh my goodness, what is it? The New Philosophical Writing in the Novel All Will by Friedrich Heinrich Jacobi. I have literally no idea what this is. My parents must have bought it and put it here because it was in English. <laughs> we have Moby Dick. I think this is quite a nice version. I bought this in Toronto, I remember, God, a long, long time ago, maybe like 2009, 10. And I was taking American literature class and we we're reading Moby Dick, so I thought I'd buy this. And I felt like all like Matilda and stuff, but I never ended up finishing it. Classic. Life of Pi, I read this many years ago as well. Yann Martin is actually from Montreal, I believe. We have an Isabella Yende book. From the top here we have Caleb Williams. I don't remember if I bought this randomly because I was like trying to buy books in English or if this is from uni, but anyway. Pride and Prejudice, of course. The Greatest Keepers by Kirsty Logan, this is a Scottish book. How to Stop Time by Matt Haig, I quite love this book. M is for Magic by Neil Gaiman. I don't know if I've actually read this one. I think I bought it in a charity shop. The Miniature is by Jesse Burton. 60 Degrees North by Malachi Talek. This is a non-fiction about places that are at 60 degrees north in the world. Blink by Malcolm Gladwell. I have no idea what this is. The O. Henry Prize Stories. Never seen that. <laughs> the Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. Also read that, I think a couple of these books, including some of these at the top, I may have read when I was like between uh, my, between basically times where I've lived in Scotland. So I've usually come back for a few months. Um, Michel Foucault, The History of Sexuality. I took, I read this as well as Virginia Woolf's Orlando. I read both of these during my gender and sexuality class at university. Morris by Ian Forster. Annie John by Jamie Kincaid. This beautiful used sticker from the university library. Um, oh yeah, Good Night Desdemona, Good Morning Juliet by Anne-Marie MacDonald. This is a play that is basically an academic who falls into the Sh a Shakespearean universe. Very good, I remember liking it and I thought I'd reread it while I'm here. Another Michel Foucault, this is Herculine Barbet. Uh, she's an intersex um, I believe she was real, but anyway, I don't I remember if this is a fiction or non-fiction. And A Tranquil Star by Primo Levi. And now the second bookshelf. Beautiful. So up here we have album, like photo albums and diaries from trips, mostly to Chile. And when I studied they brought in Germany. So I won't open these anyway. Up here we have books that I've bought recently. My most recent book haul. The Manual for Feminist Resistance, The Maid by Nina Prose, um, I think this is Secret Daughter by Shilpi Samaya Goda, and this is uh, <laughs> Daniel Pinar, he's a, a chef, so this is a, a recipe book. On this, oh yeah, I actually read bought this as well at the charity shop, totally forgot about it, because it was in English, The Friend by Sigrid Nunes. Looked nice, it was kind of like the price of a, uh, books here are expensive, but this was kind of the price of a 
book in the UK, a bit cheaper, so I thought, why not? Oh, and also, this is a book my mom thought I'd enjoy. Um, Travels to Portugal with a German by Louis Routier. And these are sewing and uh, baking books. After I finished university, I was a bit lost and I wanted to learn how to do some stuff. Oh, and this book. I've never seen this before. Candace Camp. The, an Unexpected Pleasure. Okay. So a few of the books that I do have, I've kind of inherited from a cousin who passed away last year that I loved very, very much. And I think about all the time, especially when I read, because she loved reading. And she liked a lot of romance, so I ended up having some of her books. So um, my mom must have taken this one. And I also inherited some of her um, Bridgerton books. I thought that I would read and think about her. So I have the whole series, which takes us to the next bookshelf. So I have the first two here. So I'll try to read them or yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Okay, so third bookshelf. Here it is. I'm trying to do a wide view. Again, a big mix of things. Uh, some nonfiction, some books in French, uh, some classics, some new Canadian writing dictionaries you know just a bunch of stuff so we saw the Bridgerton at the top this is yeah this is a book I believe this is a writer from Chile so I wanted to read it while I was here quite short so we'll see um, here actually is a book that I had given to someone back in 2019 and they gave it back to my mom in a plastic bag for some reason this is going to hurt by LMK. Very good nonfiction. And what's the last one? 13 Verbs for Living. This is, yeah, the uh, collection of essays. And uh, my mom said it was very beautiful and I might enjoy some of them. All right, from the top, we have The Mara Thieves by Sherry Dimelin. Uh, and also The Hunting by Stars, which is technically the second book. It's the following sequel. Uh, I bought these and also The Strangers by Katerina Vermet uh, last year when I was supposed to come for Christmas. And so they arrived and obviously I never came. So I didn't quite manage to get them. And I don't think I'll be able to read them while I'm here, but we'll see. Um, this is Anne of Green Gables, but this is actually a really cute version. Let me show you. It's kind of like a graphic novel version. Anyway, I thought it was really beautiful. My dad found it at work. Here, here's Memoir Errante by Jean Dominique. This is a nonfiction about a woman. Uh, she lives in Montreal, but she's from Haiti, and it's about basically the time where um, she had to leave uh, the country, and I believe her father was murdered as well. Then we have The Hobbit. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Ulysses. I think a few of these I bought when I after I finished university and I was like, oh, I have a degree in literature. I'm going to buy and read all of these big books that everyone's always talking about. And then I never did. <laughs> a wee recipe book here. Some dictionaries, of course. I don't know what this is. And I don't think I'll take it out, but yeah. Pocket book of quotations. Another Hobbit. <laughs> oh, another To Kill a Mockingbird. Oh, I have one at home as well. The Silmarillion, one of the only books I've ever read that I basically DNF'd after like 10 pages. This is a globalization of culture. I read this when I was doing studying communications. Anne Rice, Interview with an Empire, Scarlet Letter, Count of Monte Cristo. Oh, I have an English version. How bizarre. Tristan is old. Oh, this seems to be in half German. Then Macbeth, Timmy the Shrew, Old Man the Sea. <laughs> uh, this is just a writing um, book. Kesha Narai, Sir Gawain, The Green Knight, and Chaucer. So I love the classics here. Some of them I had to read for uni. Another version of Anne of Green Gables. This is a tiny, tiny version. If you look at my hand next to it. Small, small book. Small book. All right. And apart from these, we have all of these here. I won't go through every one, obviously. We have more Lord of the Rings. I think there's so many copies of this around. Uh, philosophy book. You have to take philosophy when you're at college here. No idea what this is. No idea. <laughs> Bart as Zed, I have to read this, I had to read this for a class. Big Fish, love the movie. Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man. I wanted to be all snob and read this one day, but never managed it. Muriel Spark, The Prime of Miss Jean Brody, good one, good Scottish classic. Great Expectation, cool, probably abridged, but I don't know. Uh, Thomas Love Peacock, no idea. 
what this is or why I have it. James Baldwin drew up in his room. Read this for, I believe, my gender and sexuality class as well. This is a Gabriel Garcia Marquez book that I got from Chile. I believe from even my grandparents' house. Another Gabriel Garcia in English at this time. Isabel Allende. This is my invented country. This is actually non-fiction. Really enjoyed that about her basically going back to Chile after she left for so long and uh, how the memory she has of it is not a country that exists now. So very interesting. Oh, Highland Cow. Hello. Some tiny books. Mm, French books, French books. This is Fred Vargas. She's a French crime writer. She, H. Ryder Hagar, no idea what this is. Oh, a travel book to Chile. Uh, language in cinema, so this is from uh, my time studying film. And I don't know what this is. Let's now go to the next one. This is a very classic heavy one. We have Shakespeare. Got a lot of Shakespeare. Uh, I had to buy all of these when I was studying Shakespeare. I took a one year class. I don't know how many plays I actually managed to finish. Read all the sonnets and stuff like that, but I realized I wasn't that big of a fan and also my English was a lot less good back then, so I didn't get as <laughs> much of it as I thought. Ulysses, another one. God, there's far too many versions of this in this library. Poor Things by Alex Alasdair Gray. Only recently, like in the last few years, realized this is like almost like a bit of a classic of Scottish literature. More photography. Readers, I don't know what this is. No idea. Okay. Might be like some short stories. No idea. Metas and Madness. This is when I'm studying theater. <laughs> Becherel, you know, every good French person has one. Up here we have Spanish verbs. We have a bit of, yeah. We also have a book in, I think it's just in German. Yeah. Postcards from Penguin. Oh, 100 years of book covers in one box. Oh, very cute. I think my mom must have got this from Charity Shop. Sir Walter Scott Iveno. So another Scottish classic. Mark Twain. Don't know if I've ever read this. Aristotle. No, I've read some Aristotle for philosophy class, but never again. And H.G. Wells and Veronica, I think we had to read this for a class at university. The H. Lawrence, the Penguin Great Novels of the H. Lawrence, literally no idea. Must have bought this when I was trying to buy all these male writers of classics, you know. And finally, Disgrace by Jim Cootsie. And this very cute little ring holder. You can put your ring on here. Very cute. And finally at the bottom here we have, again, a lot of books from uni. Um, my dictionary. This is a concise Anglo-Saxon dictionary. This is for my old English class. Along with, yeah, my a guide to old English. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, I have this huge Bronte sister. Oh, I think I bought this and I never read them until like, I started, only started last year reading them. An actor's work that I read obviously during um, acting and theatre classes. This I believe was for a British literature class. Yeah, it's like an anthology. God. Then, yeah, we continue again with more anthologies. Middle Ages, 16th century to early 17th century. Literally part of my most hated period of literature. Uh, something Fierce, a friend gave me this actually. This is from a Chilean a writer, I think it's non-fiction. Never actually managed it. Love Grossman's The Magician. I tried to read this. You can tell actually I'm only halfway. <laughs> Not even. I really hated it. Um, so I didn't. I also DNF'd it. The Moonstone. Read this in the first year of uni. Picture of Dorian Gray. Also read this in the first year of uni. Frankenstein as well. <laughs> actually, I actually enjoyed these. Maybe my first year of uni was like a good one. Uh, Fun Home by Alex Alison Beckedel. I uh, read this during gender and sexuality class. And then again, more kind of anthologies of uh, literature. God, I can't believe I still have all of them. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. I have a, a dictionary here. Yeah, a bit more dic few dictionaries up here as well. So that is it from my bookshelf at home. Like I said, it's a mix of things that I used to have for university, books that I've enjoyed, books that I've done, I realized, and some more books that I've 
that I've bought lately. All right, so now I'm gonna take you on a slight, little tiny walk through um, the books in this house. I'll just do a little few shots, you know, I won't talk you through all of the books because that's, that would be far, far too long, but just to give you an overview of how I grew up, basically. <laughs> I also thought I would show you this incredible book that my cousin had bought. It's Jane Austen, the Illustrated Library. It is so chunky. Look at it. It's just... <laughs> Let's see if it's through there. So that's the first one. Some nice illustrations. These are chunky ones, they aren't quite for reading, are they? But they're so beautiful. Just a beautiful, beautiful book. Incredible. A bit too big to take back with me to Scotland. <laughs> and that's it for my Canadian bookshelf tour. And it was really nice to go through some of the books, a little walk down memory lane a little bit. <laughs> but really lovely and I hope you enjoyed it. So as always, thank you for watching and I see you back. Bye.